Welcome to Let's Build. I am Gernot and today I want to build an Amplify app with you, a multi-table app, uh, because there are some examples for Amplify, most of them with React, and there are some larger examples. Um, but what I thought was missing is a simple example with multiple tables. And for this example, I take the project application from my Honeycode session. So um, let's begin. So Amplify View Multitable. Um, what do we have? If we have an AWS Amplify app, we have a little bit of architecture. The main services are Amplify itself and AppSync if you use GraphQL as an API. You can also use the Lambda API. And so the whole Amplify framework, so the libraries, the CLI and the services are an addition to the whole serverless world. And that's also um, the reason why yeah, I am doing this because I'm also into these serverless things. So Amplify is a little bit different than other AWS services. We will see that usually an AWS meta service uh, like Beanstalk will create with CloudFormation other services and you can see the boxes, the modules. And Amplify has some magic in it and some people like that, some people do not like that. Um, but there is, uh, for instance, CI CD pipeline which you cannot see, which just works. Which makes it a little bit easier, but also a little bit um, less transparent for us. So what we're gonna do, we have a little bit, um, in the second part, we will do a pipeline and uh, some hosting maybe today. But today we will build a front end and a back end and with an AppSync resolver to DynamoDB. So the application itself is it's really really easy we just have a project management software which consists of projects and the projects have a customer and a status and these are linked together and what we will do today you will see in this sheet here we will install a little bit of the cli initialize api model and so on and so on and for view, we will also do some installation. But at first, we look at our console, the management console in the Let's Build account. And at first, we will clean up a little bit because I promised to go from zero. So nothing is an Amplify. Nothing is an AppSync in Frankfurt. And no cloud formation, deleted my CDK stack. And we just have me as a user. <laughs> so I have to connect. And uh, this is the old one. And I have uh, registered a domain up front because it takes some time. And this is let's build ideas.com. So at first, some cleanup. How do we clean up an AWS account? And for that, we have the really sharp knife, a dangerous thing, AWS Nuke. So, and when we, I have a little script here um, with a profile and um, in the configuration from Nuke, it's vital that you have a blacklist and I have my production account in the blacklist and some other accounts in the blacklists and some filters. So no decount VPC and so on. What does Nuke do? Nuke goes through almost each service and try to delete it. And sometimes servers in AWS have dependencies. And so you have to try at least three times to really delete it. So this is really, um, yeah. War. So 
we try to nuke, I have to put in the account ID and it's uh, let's build, not let build. And in the first run, nuke say what he would kill, what he would nuke. And because I've cleaned up before, there is nothing left here. But uh, we can do this afterwards again. So um, we will start installing the CLI and this is part of the terminal, what we're doing locally. Afterwards, we will come to a few services on AWS side. So at first, um, we create, uh, no, at first we, we can uh, again <laughs> install the Amplify um, CLI. So I um, npm install globally the AWS-Amplify um, CLI. And Amplify like the Amplify also good. Amplify like the CDK has often releases, so it's a good idea to install it. While it's installing, I can tell you about the history from Amplify. Amplify is a little bit of the successor to the mobile hub. Um, yeah, a year ago, AWS only had the mobile hub which was a meta service where you could connect the modules you need for model, uh, mobile. This is um, Cognito for authentication, S3 for storage, and DynamoDB and so on. And with the mobile hub, you got an um, example application in a few languages um, to use these services. With Amplify, um, you have a specially built service to hold everything um, together for that. If we really start by zero, then we have to do amplify configure upfront. And that's the thing I have done, only registered the domain and the amplify configure, but we will do the amplify um, in it. So um, if we have, going back to the architecture, if we have the front end, which is a single page application, we will develop it locally and push it to Amplify. And Amplify can do the hosting with a Amplify domain and can connect it to my domain uh, with one click. It's really easy to do that. So at first from the front end and I have um, chosen view to do that and to use view we have also to do an install of the CLI and this is view um, CLI. It's everything installed locally already but if you start I will also do a block entry for that um, you can see what you have to do. Um, by the way usually I use um, fin as my package manager for TypeScript because Fin caches all modules and only does links um, to the modules, to the central cache. But with some of these uh, lips that did not work and so I got back to NPM. AWS also has an, a new service, um, it's called uh, art code artifact where you can um, cache and store your packages like artifact okay can do an install this is a new version from yesterday i did that one day ago so um after we installed the view cli then and that's a trend in the framework that you can create a template, a skeleton from the framework itself. So we start with view create and I call it simple um, PM. And if I switch to my Visual Studio Code, at the moment there is nothing because 
I'm going to create the directory and this with view create simple PM. Then it's also takes some time, but I can take this and add the new folder, the workspace folder to my, oh, it's, <laughs> it's there anyway. Go to simple PM and then we can see what is happening there. There are some packages. Okay, what will be in this folder? We have a package JSON where a few plugins um, are referenced and the plugins will be installed. The same thing we have to do, we, we do the add-on for the Amplify modules um, afterwards, but we will see this is uh, the first step to do um, to, to have a local web server for that. And with Amplify, Amplify um, we use the modules from AWS and this is GraphQL or this is Lambda as a function or this is authorization as a function um, which we can use for that. So at the moment we are here doing um, the front end. So and these are the first few things uh, we have done. We were here, um, okay, and we installed, no, uh, <laughs> not the color, but the color of the background. Okay, we installed it and then we go to the other things. We have to install the CLI from Amplify and then alter some things. So now we have created the simple PM and we just can do an npm run serve. And if we do an npm run, it will look in the package JSON in the script. So the npm run serve does nothing like view CLI service serve. So to make it easier for me, um, I will use my, my make file, my favorite make file, and this is task file. And I will init um, task file YAML and put this. That means the starting of the server, I will put here in the task file. Why do I do that? Because with the project you have many little scripts, uh, one for serving, for pushing here and compiling this and you can use the package JSON um, but in the package JSON there are many things, the libraries and the other things and usually in my projects there are some other languages um, also together polyglot into one project and then I need one whole make file and task file dev is a very good addition to that. So, and then I say, okay, serve locally. And for the command, I will do this. This means npm run serve. And now with all of my projects, I just do a task list and then I see, okay, the serve. So task serve. Then the development server is started. And this is an in-time compilation. This is good for development. If you alter a page, a module or so, you see immediately what is the difference. So this is my local file going to Chrome and we see our documentation. So looking into the directory, something more has happened, not only the package JSON and so on. Okay, just a readme. Um, some things that are interesting. The package JSON for the libraries, the babel config, um, how to package 
the files together. And then we have two main directories, the public, which is like the web server public. And so our index HTML is here. So if we have uh, like a title here, Webpack auction options plugin title, simple PM. I could alter this to uh, look here. Then in the terminal, it will compile. It's very fast, so you did not see this. And then I have look here in the, uh, okay, it's a little bit too small. I will make it larger. Yeah, you see it's in the tab. Um, it's um, the, the title has changed. So, but this is only our local application and now we will amplify it. Because from the architecture, okay, we have the front end, but it's only locally and I want to deploy it in the cloud. And so after we've created this and we only have the public and source directory and in the source directory, we have our main program, the view app and just a hello world component. And we will add something here to have the connection to AWS. So amplify configure would be the first thing, but we will do an amplify in it in this directory. And so amplify can know it's a view application. So amplify in it, come on. Name of the project scanned, environment dev, check. I will do, no, I will not do Vim. I will do Visual Studio Code and JavaScript with view. Source in SRC, dist and distribution, the build command, the star start command. And then it says something using default provider AWS cloud formation. And that means that the command line interface, the command line interface uses cloud formation to create the backend and front end resources. So do I want to use an AWS profile? Yes. The profile is let's build. And now the backend environment is added to the console. Now you see the cloud formation here and you will see some more cloud formation. And this makes it transparent what is happening there. Because as I told you, Amplify has some magic devices in it, but here you can see, okay, which resources, just an authentication role, a deployment bucket. Um, you can go to the buckets here. I have nuked all other buckets. So this is the bucket 1st September 7.45 PM and objects can be public. Okay. So what else? Uh, it's completed and it will create some roles for Amplify and the backend services to function because everything in AWS is an API and you need the permission to use that. And the AWS services also need permissions to use other services. And this is done via a role. So now we have the init. I have now just um, an, an, an empty application and uh, we have added a few more things to the directories. Here's my amplify directory. 
I have a configuration and some things for the backend, but not so many things now. So what I now going to do, um, I want to install some other things. I want to install the AWS Amplify Core. And with the whole framework, you have to keep in mind what is locally, uh, sorry, it was AWS Amplify slash core. Um, you have something locally that is the CLI and the libraries you use, and you have the backend service. And Amplify is the whole framework to do that. So, and with the container for the web application, you say, okay, what compon components do I want to add to Amplify? And you can add storage component for S3, authentication components. Amplify makes it very easy. It was uh, difficult the time before to add authentication. With Amplify, it's really easy to do that. Um, and some API. And for the API, you have the opportunity to choose Lambda or to use GraphQL. And GraphQL is done via AppSync. And with AppSync, you can add resolvers. This is done automatically. The normal resolver is DynamoDB, but you can also add your own resolvers there. And that makes it really flexible. So I have added the library and now I say, okay, I will use Amplify with an API. I want to use that module, the API. Then it asks me, okay, what do you want to use a REST API, which would be an API gateway with Lambda, or we will use GraphQL. And then it's about the authentication. I will choose API key, but that is not always the best option because an API key is embedded in the code. Usually you, you shouldn't do that for security reasons, but just for the simplicity, um, I will do that. So we have the simple PM API key, and that is my description. And I have a few iterations until the whole simple application is done. And so I will say, okay, 90 days until the API key expires. So do I have a GraphQL schema up front? No. Um, I choose a schema template. And then it asks me to edit the schema. So now it goes back to what do we want to build? And the whole application is a project with customers and a status. And in the GraphQL modeling language, we will model our n-dimensional our relational database, although DynamoDB is not um, relational. So the first thing would be that we have our project and this is a model. And at first we need an ID. And this is a attribute we have to have. Then we will have a name could be a string. And then we have the status. So the status should be another table. So we have here the status as model and the status also has an ID, a title as a string. And then we model the connection between these two things. We have our projects and status. These are just two DynamoDB tables. This will be DynamoDB tables, but how will they be connected? It's no relational database, so we have no primary and foreign keys, but we have to tell GraphQL to use the other table or the ID from the other table. And then we can say, okay, status, 
is of type status and we will have a connection and the name will be pro 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 typo project status connection and this is just to have a naming for that project status connection and then in the status itself this references the id so if you add a row to the project you have to use the status id for that you just say status uh, from the id so and now the connection in the other direction we will have projects and this is uh, 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 because it's one to n uh, we have um, the same status is connected to many projects and so we'll have an array of projects here and the name is the same with project status connection and with the same logic we can add a customer so we have a customer from type customer and we have a connection and it's good to have a naming scheme and use the same naming scheme so we have table one table two and connection and camel case and then you can guess we have to do a customer table And this is the thing what was missing, what I thought was missing in the other examples. We have the to-do app and this was just one table and it was no relationship between the tables. So we now have the type customer and um, this is also a model. We have the ID, always the same. Copy and paste is the root of all evil. So let's be evil and uh, this is just from our sample application uh, the zip status of the customer is a boolean and then again we have the projects and this is already and there you can see why copying is evil we have almost the same we have the projects but the connection name is another thing so let me just check it type project model we have the id the string the status uh, could be empty connection project status connection and the customer it's customer okay that's all i have an auto save here so it is already saved and you see it's in our simple pm directory amplify in the back end and there you have the schema graphql and from this base schema amplify will create many other things you will see so what i now will do i build my local backend resources which will create the resolvers and so on with just an amplify push so what is happening now before that in amplify okay we now have an app and we have nothing in app sync but we will get this shortly and we also have nothing in our dynamodb tables because otherwise nuke would have killed it and with the creation of my api um the framework will create the app sync which is the connection for the graphql to my application and the back end um, the resolvers in app sync which will go to dynamodb so uh, let's make it easy stay with javascript and then with this base schema Amplify generates a CRUD resources for us. So it creates a lookup, a read, an update, and these are the things we can use in our application. 
So this will take a few minutes and we can look in the architecture what is happening here. With the Amplify CLI, we have created a few cloud formations, which now will create the Amplify itself, the project, we have seen it. With the Add API, we have an, an AppSync um, function and the Resolvers, which is itself, um, this is uh, templates for DynamoDB. You can alter it yourself. These are velocity templates like an API gateway, very simple uh, template language. But for this, everything is done from GraphQL, from Amplify itself. So what is happening here now? We have our application. We can look, okay, what do we have? We have the application and we already have a production URL, but nothing is published yet. Um, we have a domain management and we can connect it later. I think this will not be for today. Um, then we can uh, have a notification access control. That's really good. If you say, okay, we have this website, it's online, but I want to have um, a simple password for that. So not everybody can access it and generate traffic because traffic costs money. And the logs, and these are the things that this is uh, magically in one place. Usually the logs would be in CloudWatch. And here the logs are just in Amplify. So, and the same is with the CI CD pipeline. We do this in the second um, step. We will connect a code commit with Amplify and then we can push the application. But for now, we just have a few cloud formations and in the cloud formation, we can look what is happening. And now we see some nested stacks. This is our uh, main stack. And then I have add an API with the name AP Simple PM. And these are the different parts of the API. I have a connection stack and then I have my tables, the status, project and customer. And if I look at the project, which is the main table, I can look at the resources and it creates a resolver, a role and a DynamoDB table. The table is a backend where it stores and the resolver is the translation to do that. So if we go to DynamoDB now, we can see the tables and these are project status and customer. And at the moment, um, it's nothing in it. Start search, nothing in it. So that means um, our first step is the backend and we have GraphQL endpoint and an API key. This is done um, managed automatically by AWS. We don't have to memorize it um, and so on. And the keys are here in the configuration. And we will import the configuration from AWS exports to use it in our program. But at first we will have a look at the backend. Um, remember, this is our schema. And now we can work with this schema in GraphQL. And the AppSync console is our front end to the GraphQL service. So we have the simple PM development. And now we see the schema. But what you notice, this schema is much more complex than this because this is a compressed form. And here also the inputs, it's translated a little bit. So, and that means with, you have the data sources, DynamoDB, um, no functions yet, and we can do queries. Everything from our schema is now documented and we have three types. We have queries. This is just for getting data. 
we have mutations to alter data and we have subscriptions to get real near real time updates of data and this is thing why graphql is really powerful uh, with AppSync because you can make an application and in the moment you press your key and update the data every other client which is subscribed will get the new data so and now i will be a little bit lazy um, but first we can do some query okay the first time i will type a query after that i will copy and paste so we see uh, we have no status uh, but this is the backend we use graphql for the status and in the console we have an auto completion for that and if we have a query we say something like okay we want to list the status and it comes from json so it's very json-ish and after we named the query we can use the pre-modeled queries and these pre-modeled queries are also to use for our program in the graphql subfolder in queries so if we see here a list status statuses <laughs> plural um, we also have the list statuses here as a um, javascript we can um, import it and can use it so we have crud up front so um, if we want to have a list status we get items back and we have to say uh, what do you want to see from these items for instance an uh, the id and the title and then we have in our schema the connection to projects and so we can see here projects and with the projects we just get the next token or the item what do we want so what do we expect when we now fire this query we expect nothing that is good and this is what we expected um, because i want to make a simple api i will not program the whole status management and therefore i want to um, add a few statuses and this is not a query this is a mutation so we so we start with mutation um, create status and again uh, we use a pre-compiled or created um, function for that and we need an input and with the input uh, we can have an auto generated id but because we have to put the id in new projects also i want to set the id myself and want to have a title and this is new because in our application the projects should have a status should stay simple and the simple statuses will be new open and closed that is all you need for a to do or a project app on that side so we have the title new and if we succeeded to create this i want to get back the id and the title and i could also get back something like created at so fire this and then magic happens we have something created this time and now we expect that in the DynamoDB we see something oh yeah there's our status for that so I need some more statuses and to be fast I just make a copy and copy and paste uh, on a new uh, we had this already I want to have the open I want to have the open uh, Okay. typing is faster than copying two will be open and three 
will be closed. So we can look here. One, two, three, new, open, closed. Very good. That is our status. So for today, to keep it simple, the first step is that we read our status. We have the local um, web application and how can we read the status? How can we use um, now the, the API to talk with Amplify? So we have a few things here. We have our main app and we have our main uh, main um, application for that. We will use um, a component and the first component we saw was the hello world component. So if we make our task here, we have to serve. Then we can go back to our local application. Okay. And if I just say, okay, throw this all away and really say hello, then it will compile and you will see it here in the application. So it's near real time. And what I now want to do is in this component, um, I want to start a status list. So um, it will have an ID um, like status list, could be small. And with our web framework, we can iterate through values. And the values we will get, status list, and the values we will get from the backend. And if we got them, um, we just can say, okay, uh, I have another diff. And in this diff, we will make a view for loop. And the loop will just the four, I will get items out of the statuses. <laughs> statuses. So, and the key for that will be the item.id. So, uh, then uh, we have here that we just put the title from the item because this is our status. And we close the div here. If you now look, the status list is quite empty. And what comes in handy um, are the dev components for that. With the Chrome, we have a view development. And we see, ah, here is hello world. And here is just a message. There is no um, yeah, status list for that. How do we implement that? And for that, at first, we have to import our API from um, AWS Amplify. So this is from imported from AWS Amplify, and we will use the API for that. So have we added it? Uh, we will see. And um, we want to query the statuses. So we'll have an import list statuses state status um, from and here the GraphQL queries. So can you put it there? No, oh, no, no. But that would be, could do something like a copy relative pass. Oh, not really. So it's relative 
to hello world. So we have GraphQL service and here we have import API of little program here. So our components hello world and I think it should be that we use the API for that. Do we have it uh, from? Ah, okay, it should be that. So then uh, we have um, this module and the name is now not hello world anymore. It is the status list. And we have some props. We do not need props, but um, what is used in variables in the app itself, it is returned by data. And then we need to return the data to the application. And I will initialize the status object here. Uh, and, and okay, don't need I uh, don't need props at the moment. So now we have the data and then we will get into the hooks from um, Amplify, uh, sorry, from View. And these hooks you can see in the Amplify documentation. Uh, we create an um, application before created, created, and then we have some other things updated, mounted, and so on. And for this, we will put our function in to the hooks. And we can do this uh, if it's just created. We want to get the statuses, and this will be a local function, a local method. And we can also do this with update it and copying is the root of all evil this gets status and after that we have to implement uh, um, the methods okay so and the methods now we have to do this in async get status and now the magic starts. We use the API backend. We could do something like, okay, I have some states to have a new uh, name for that. And then I, in the other function, I can do an await. And for the non-JavaScript uh, enthusiast, this is just uh, not callback-based. Calling is just a calling. So. Um, the application waits until the request is um, responded. And we will do a GraphQL call. And the query is uh, predefined. So it's list status and it should, no, it does not come out of the um, AST for that. And after that, we have the states and then we will put the um, result of the query into this status, which we then display here. So uh, this status, now it's working, this status, and we will have the uh, states. Now we have to have the whole um, data structure and here it comes in handy um, if you work with that, that you will see the data structures here. But at the moment we will just uh, use it and come back with, comes back with data, uh, uh, list statuses dot items. So, and that should be all for the moment. Uh, dependency. Yeah, I hadn't installed it yet. Uh, sorry. 
So I install AWS Amplify, but it hadn't give a warning here. Why not? So installed it, serve again. And now we see the status list, but not yet the data. So uh, left something out. Usually it should status list. And so let's have a look. What have I missed for that? Um, I have the hello world. This is called. I have v4 8 item and status. Key is item ID, item title. I have the data return status at created. This get status is called in the method. This get status. We have an await from the GraphQL list statuses. And I have list status from this. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have forgotten the main thing. And this is that in the main, we also have to import Amplify. Uh, import Amplify. Um, and we will use it in a modular way. So AWS Amplify core. Um, then we, oh, it's just not. And we have to import the AWS exports because here the GraphQL endpoint and our key is um, configured. And so we import the export uh, from AWS exports ex no suggestion, ports, ports, this is German. So, and then we have to configure Amplify. And so we say Amplify. Configure with the imported exports. So, uh, this is for main js. So we have failed to compile, can't resolve. Uh, it was export, but it's here. Maybe we have to start again. No relative fault, it was found, it was export in main js. Main. Where, where do we have the exports here? We have the main, it should be there. It is exports. Try to compile it again. Sometimes caching doesn't work. Source main chat S. But AWS export is also a main job as okay. Um, I will look it up. Where's the difference from my sample solution? Okay, no different, no difference there. Uh, can I look in the app view? Uh, but there are also we have the components and we have a world name app. So the mystery remains 
we have exports, we have exports. Okay, I just will copy because there's a typo. I cannot see uh, this late in the evening because it's, ah, now it's uh, successful. Great. And we have our status list. We have, uh, <laughs> we have a, a lift. How is it called? Um, if the rocket is starting, we have a lift off. So now we have in uh, in one hour built a simple app, but with Vue, with GraphQL, and Amplify. And the next thing will be to publish the whole thing, but this will do in the next step next week. So, but let's see what we have managed so far. With Vue, we have installed the CLI and we have adapted the main.js to get um, the configuration from AWS and to authenticate itself because this is locally, it authenticated itself against the GraphQL and got the information out of the DynamoDB database. And so the status list is also running. With AppSync, we had the API, we have done an init, we have the um, API imported, we have the module generated, we have the DynamoDB database, we have added the statuses with the GraphQL mutations and these things we will do next time. So I hope you've gotten something out of it. Um, building an Amplify view multi-table up. Next time we will add a hosting with the domain and we'll see um, now the, the hardest part is done because we have combined a local web application with the Amplify GraphQL with the backend. And this is via Amplify to AppSync because Amplify has created the resolvers for us, the um, mutations to create something and the queries and so on. And so um, yeah, it's not so hard, but to get logically back a few streams before to Honeycode where the whole thing was done in 50 minutes. So after one hour, um, we have got one list, one status list, but we will be much more flexible in the end. So thank you very much for watching on Twitch or on YouTube. If you have any um, questions or recommendations and so on, um, please use my Twitter handle uh, Megaproaktiv or go to our blog where will I will post the code um, the next time or to our website and hire us as consultants or for training or in our GitHub repository. So much for today. Stay healthy, follow us and only follow nice people. So follow us and have a great night. Bye bye.